Hey guys, we've got a couple of things to go over in this video. First up, we've got the uh, rally party that happened with us, LHG and NBK about two days ago. So, um, DBR, NBK and LHG, who were actually on a Kingdom raid, got together and decided to do some triple rallies on random anti-targets. This is the first one we'll be rallying today. The idea was to make three rallies, uh, but because LHG only had like eight players in K663, uh, they ended up not being able to fill, even though we tried to send some fillers over. Uh, so it really ended up being a double rally party with uh, just us and NBK. And then eventually when uh, Fallen goes offline, Chiefy goes, to LA, uh, Chiefy goes to NBK to lead. So what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up my walk time so that the rallies will all walk at the same time everyone hits in the correct order. I think uh, the first target we sent, or we were supposed to send, uh, two range and one cav. Because LHG couldn't fill, we just ended up doing a cav and a range. I was going to go range. Uh, Fallen was going cav. In this kingdom, uh, you have a lot of rally traps, but at the same time, there are also a lot of players with not many troops or just really bad comps just uh, sit there unshielded, thinking that they'll be safe with anti. And uh, we thought that would be fun to go try a few of these targets. We didn't even end up hitting like a major rally trap until the end. If you're watching Dakota's stream, you'll see that he got capped at the end of rally party. Uh, but quite annoyingly, some of the targets that we looked at that we actually decided not to rally because they looked too trappy ended up being zeroed by another guild a day later. Uh, but yeah, this is the first target. He's 340 mil might in monster hunting gear. He's in Chinese guild and uh, we timed the rally party for about uh, 4 or 3 a.m. in China. If someone has anti up, there isn't really like any way to tell if they're uh, a really big trap or not. But one thing you can do is check if they're getting reinforcements and if they are, how many. Because if they are a rally trap and they're online ready to take your hits, they'll be asking their guild for reinforcements and their guildmates will probably reinforce them. Whereas if they aren't online and aren't asking for reinforcements, no one comes to help them. As the timer ticks down to zero, you still got not got any reinforcements or healed or changed gear. So I'm pretty confident about this. Now I hit first and I get capped, but then Fallen hits a couple of seconds right after me and burns him. So it turns out that this guy is actually in a range phalanx. I'm waiting for Fallen to tell me what's left. He tells me there's basically just cab range, so I set range again. Now, I'm going to show you his report right now. Obviously, we don't have my report, so we can't tell exactly what he started with. But based off of Fallen's report, I'm going to estimate he started with 3 million T2 range and, you know, around 800k T4 range. I sent my march in Inf Wedge, so I cut through half of his range and Fallen sent his cab march in range wedge which meant that his cab march cut through the another half of his range and then took out basically all of his inf leaving cav range left. We did actually hit in the wrong order. He was supposed to go first and I was supposed to go second, uh, but he ended up hitting second and I hit first, which worked out in this situation because we originally assumed that he'd be an infantry phalanx, but it turns out he's in range. If he had hit first, he'd probably have gotten capped and I might've got capped second as well. So things worked out for the best. Now, my second rally is going to absolutely smash him. He's now only got 200k troops left after that hit. And then uh, Fallen, Fallen's rally is going to take out the last 200k and get his leader. So, first target, pretty easy zero. We're off to a good start. And then we start looking for other targets at around a similar might range. And we find this uh, guy who's sitting next to the edge of a lake. And he's got camps out, so we hit the camps and see that he's in cavalry phalanx. So Fallen is going to go set range. I'm going to go set inf. With the assumption being that his cav front line will be taken out with a single range rally. But then this guy comes online and throws off an emote. So we've got to cancel. Because if you guys don't know, if someone comes on and uses an emote, it means they don't really want to take the rally. Because if, if you do want to take a rally, then you don't normally let the rally leader know you're online. So if someone throws up an emote and if you don't cancel, they're probably going to shield. So it's in this situation, it is usually better to just cancel right there and then. Because if they do shield, then you've just wasted more wing boots and relocators that you might not have wasted if you'd cancelled a few minutes before. 
Now we tried a number of targets over the next hour or so, but all of them ended up either shielding or porting away or whatever. And then Dakota hit the rally trap after we'd finished, which I wasn't on to record. Uh, but now we're going after this player in Fury. He's around 240 mil. I was actually sent his scout earlier in the day by a player who doesn't really like him very much. And he's got a pretty easy comp right there. So that's his scout report with a uh, times two on. Now, since then, he has built more T4, got rid of his T3 and built more T2 as well. Now, I didn't actually know this because I, I had no idea what might he was at at the time the scout was taken. But I reckoned he couldn't have grown much, so he'd still be pretty easy. I've set a Cav Rally. Oh, and uh, by the way, I was going to go after him later in the day during the rally party because this was actually before the party but then i saw him go into fury and i thought well i might as well go now in hindsight i should have waited for a double because that would have made this much better but looking at his comp i didn't think i needed to uh, turns out <laughs> i did so he's getting reinforcements now and the rally is about to launch we're going to obviously spam him to try and stop him from seeing what's coming and countering and we'll also use carpets now, we made a couple of mistakes here. We should have had someone else teleport right next to him, ready to start another rally, because this guy didn't choose to port to the forest. That would have been the best option. He is going to win, so he didn't need to port to the forest this time. Uh, but if he'd been more prepared, we would have been able to get a second rally going and smash him. So my rally is going now, carpeting really, really quickly. I lose. <laughs> uh, that's because this guy actually changed to range wedge and decimated my cav rally there i took out 1 million t2 range which isn't bad considering it was a counter but yeah i wasn't that close to being capped because he didn't even reach my siege but I, I wasn't a particularly nice hit and if i get countered and still take out almost 1.1 million t2 range then if i had got the counter on him it would have been a sweet hit so we're definitely going to wait for that guy to go into fury again I don't think he will now until he's built up more troops, but we'll keep an eye on him just in case. Now, let's talk about the hero in the new update that came out yesterday. Firstly, I'm not sure anyone knew this hero was coming out. I didn't see it mentioned in any of the posts. So when I woke up this morning and saw it, I was kind of surprised. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually going to discuss the rest of the update in a future video because I've got a lot of opinions on that. And... Some of them are quite negative, to be fair. The update was a lot different from what I thought it was going to be, as you guys know I made that video. I think it was a week ago about uh, how the wording of the post from the Vietnamese Facebook site was a bit dodgy to me, and I thought it said some things that it didn't. I think the model for this hero is amazing. IGD really went out of their way to design this one very nicely. It looks good. The uh, voice lines are okay. They're not... Like, none of the voice lines are great, to be fair. Uh, but this one isn't bad. And it, it just looks like a good hero. I mean, a lot of people have already bought the uh, $5 packs just to get the avatar. Which, you know, I can't really blame them for because it looks very nice. Uh, the skills. Now, funny thing about the skills. When I first logged into the game yesterday, it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I, I just woke up and I logged in. And the first thing that came up when I logged in was the, uh, the pack for this hero. And when I uh, looked at the hero and I looked at the skills, I saw 10% infantry attack, 10% infantry defense. And I was like, who's going to want to send that in a march? Because, you know, other infantry heroes will have 30% infantry attack and they're like 50% infantry HP. So why would IGG bring out this hero for infantry when it seems like the only real boost you get from it is the crafting speed? And it wasn't until a few hours later when I saw in chat, they were talking about the skills and then they mentioned it was passive. And then it was like, oh, I get it now. So you don't, have, you don't actually have to send this hero in your march to get the boost. When you get the hero to gold, you, uh, you'll get the 10% infantry attack. And that will be active all the time, regardless of whether you're using the hero in the march or not. And then I had another revelation this morning when I realized that, oh, Boommeister's attack and HP skills are also passive. So you don't need him uh, in your march to get his boosts either. I know, guys, it has taken me quite a while to catch on. Uh, but yeah, I, I mailed someone with this hero already gold and asked him how much it costs to max him outright. And he replied with $1,325. I'm guessing it's US dollars. 
uh, that is kind of the price I would expect this hero to be. Uh, now, if you get it with the $5 packs, it's obviously going to be cheaper, but it will take more time. The boosts are very nice. Of course, you get the crafting speed for your T5 and the passive inf attack and defense boosts. Uh, now, IgG continually explore new ways to increase stats. So you've got castle skins, familiars, and research. And now it appears they're increasing people's attack stats with the use of passive skills on heroes so we can definitely expect range and cav versions of this hero with similar stats to come out quite soon and maybe more army heroes as well that's all for today guys hope you enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new i'll see you all next time